Hi guys, we're back again. Shit. All I did was move the mouse, I swear. I don't know why that's happening. Maybe Ustream's just dropping us. Are you guys seeing any video yet? You guys see video? We don't see it here. You see the video, okay. It's your big finger. Okay. Uh, well, we don't see ourselves, which is disconcerting because we love staring at ourselves. Um, producer tube question. So, yeah, Frank, what did you notice? With your, uh, with your tube change. And what, and what kind of tube did you put in there? I'm afraid to move the mouse now. Almost no difference. Channel one bump up on off. Oh, right, what kind of tube did you put in? Muller long plate 12x7. Really? I'd listen to it on the clean. <clears throat> Where you'd hear the most difference there is in the clean, not the bump. Play to. Um, I'm assuming you're uh, channel one. Play with the bump on channel two. Put it in different positions and see if that's affecting your bump on channel one. Because if you have an early one, some of the ones we noticed the bump switch on the second channel might affect the bump on the first. Um, a little boo boo on a few of them that went out. And if that's the case, you can all update it for you for free. Uh, let me know if that's what you find out. But uh, yeah, check that out and see. And we found we, the way we originally wired the switches, we didn't notice it when you have the bump on on channel two, it actually decreases the current over on channel one for some reason. And uh, it was only, it's very few that went out like that. We caught it really early. But if you have, if anybody has one of those, we'll fix it for free. Don't worry about it. You don't even have to pay the shipping or anything. We'll do it. It's a very easy fix, too. So. Oh, Frank, you have number two, I bet. Yeah. I think it was about the first 10 that went out like that, the first batch, the first run of 10 went out like that. So if, in fact, that is the case, just contact me offline. We'll send a FedEx guy to come pick it up, and we'll fix it and send it back to you. Yeah, see, Gibson Guitar Guy, if you have that same problem, let me know. Uh, NASA develops a speedy vacuum tube prototype for computers in space. Oh, okay. NASA. Yeah, and if you do, I apologize. It's just we, we, we test and test and test and test and test here, but at the end of the day, uh, we're humans. So I apologize for our humanity. So Bill Strange says, so you are the 6L6 GC STR using for the Proto, our Ruby. Uh, no, the, the STRs we're using are the EL34s. I'm not dead set on any 6L6 yet uh, on this one. I haven't gone through that final process yet. So not sure. Um, yeah, no, the special tube request we're using is the EL34. Maybe I wasn't clear about that, sorry. Well, this is really a bummer. We can't see ourselves. Now I don't even know if we're on camera because we both have to lean over the desk to be on camera. Hopefully you can see us. Miles is off checking his porno website on his phone right now. But. So, yeah, I think it's almost time to start wrapping it up here. Wind it down in a few minutes. Are there any... Uh, any other questions you guys want to go over? Anything you've been waiting? If I missed any questions, I'm sorry. If you could re-ask them. Um, I will... Uh, Miles looking at tranny porn. <laughs> That's transformer porn, actually. Uh, actually. Miles is a little old for that, I think. Actually, I don't know if you can see this. This is what we're looking. We're looking at the price of gold. If whether it came up today, Apple is up twelve eighty one. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And Facebook is still below twenty. I'm glad I didn't buy any of that. Yeah, 
So there's a good question here. Is it possible to make a Class A amplifier with two output tubes if you have independent lines on the output transformer? Well, that would be called a dual single-ended amp. Um, there's people, people that do. Uh, Mark, yeah. Mark Beyer. Yeah, there's a few guys some, that make those. Andy, yeah, actually, Andy Marshall, the old uh, something, the, the bivalve. Yeah. That's what the bivalve is all about. You can use an EL34 and one output tube slot and a... 6v6 or a 6l6 in the other. I'm not wild about single-ended behavior. Um, it's very limiting. It works but, great in a Fender Champ. Yeah, a Champ's kind of an exception to that rule. Yeah. I have one of those Gibson GA5s from the yeah. 50s. It's a dual single-ended amp. It sounds pretty good, but when you push it really hard, it just squishes. Um, I. I haven't had great luck to with it, but also the thing we figured out, we tried making a single ended amp for a while and I got transformers from Mercury and the whole bit. And what I figured out is in order for me to make a single ended amp to the, the standard that I would want it to be, it really doesn't cost anything different than making a push pull amp. Um, uh, and nobody wants to pay a lot of money for a single ended amp. I mean, people want to buy single ended amps for 500 bucks or even that. I mean, yeah. basically, if you want a five watt amp, that's the way to go. Yeah. Want one way to go. And in order to do it well, I mean, there's a lot of little single ended amps on them, but they all have the same problems, which C bot, C bat uh, is saying perfectly here. They squish pretty bad. And it's not useful to me. You know, if you want just low, most people go for a single ended amp because they want low volume. And that's why we put the master voltage on our amps. So, especially with little Elvis, you can turn that down to like two, three watts. I got the hiccup, sorry. And um, you're in business. Uh, single ended is a big compromise in my mind in performance, just to have low volume. Because it just doesn't sound the same as push pull. You can't. It's a different set of physics going on there. You can't make it. You can't fool people by making them think that it's uh it's uh <laughs> that's funny eric uh, the, pro the problem with the univalve i i see the bivalve and the univalve commentary here yeah we the, shouldn't repeat that on the recording <laughs> i i appreciate it no no <laughs> no the the issue with the univalve is look at the size of the transformer um, they're very small for a single-ended, single output tube amp, where if, if you play a univalve you, and, and if you feel that you've gotten used to it and you kind of notice that it has a certain amount of low end and low emits, and then if you go to a different amp of the same type, you'll notice a lack of lows and mids back in the univalve. Because the transformers, in my opinion, are a little bit small. Um, well, that's the thing. You, you can't make an inexpensive amp with good transformers. You know, it, I think they were good. I think they were just too small. Well, or let me just say appropriately, yeah. you know, built transformers. Um, you know, if, if it's too small, yeah, it's Andy Marshall. Andy Marshall, we love you. You make great stuff. Um, but uh, there's no way to make an amp with good transformers cheaply. And I've tried, you know, I've checked every year when we prototype, I tried every manufacturer. And I, I went so far as about two years ago to reach out to transformer manufacturers all over the place. And I told them the specs that I wanted. And the, the sad fact of the deal is you can only get really good quality steel in North America and Western Europe. So when I went to Asian factories in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, other places, and they're just like, we can't get that steel. It doesn't exist in Asia. So there's no way to do it over there and get the same result. Um, if I could, I would. I mean, I personally, I'm very patriotic, and I, I think I try to make everything in the United States. But when it comes down to it, uh, I'm also a believer in the free market. And if somebody's making something better in another country that's cheaper, that's our fault. You know, we're the United States of America. We should be able to make anything we want. Um, so I know there are economic factors that play into that, but going overseas for the most part just saves you money. You don't get any, the quality is the compromise. And um, 
Trust me, if I could get Transformers made out of old soup cans that sound good, I'd buy the shit out of them. I love it. I just want it to sound good. And, uh, you know, a company this size has no impact on the unemployment rate or the economy in the state, you know, but um, I, uh, capitalist pig iron. Yeah, that's right. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is we make great steel here. That's one of the things the United States still does really, really well. And, you know, and same thing in Western Europe. Uh, so, there's no way around it. And a lot of guys, well, why does it cost so much? And no, no, no. I'm like, well, trust me, I'm not making any money off this stuff. Um, and they just cost a lot. A good set of Transformers, you know, like you can get a, okay, let me replace the word good with great. A great set of Transformers costs a lot of money. But it's like any other quality luxury product. To get a good set of transformers for an EL34 amp, you need to spend about 80 bucks. Uh, to get a great set like what we use, you need to spend about $400. Why the big jump? Well, it's just like anything. If you want a car that runs a quarter mile in 11 seconds, it's going to cost you $50,000. You want a car that's going to run a quarter mile in 10 seconds, it's going to cost you $120,000. You want a car that's going to run a quarter mile in, you know, eight seconds, it's going to cost you $500,000. You know, it's, you want a golf club that hits the ball 275 yards, it's 300 bucks. You want a golf club that hits the ball 290 yards, it's going to cost you $700. You know, it's not like a linear scale. You know, as you get to the top end of things, to get those extra bit of performance out of any product, the price ratchets up really fast. Well, it's the old 80-20 rule. Yeah. 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 It's just, that's the way it is. I wish it wasn't, you know. And uh, I've explored every option known to the MI world, and I end up back with Mercury Magnetics because you just can't beat them. Now, there's a lot of really good transformers that cost half or a third of them, but when you put them side by side, yeah, that's right, log logarithmic scale. Um, when you put them side by side with, I mean, I test them. I have a rig where I can put five output transformers on it and click immediately. So I'll listen to one output transformer made by manufacturer X, and well, it sounds really good. And then, you know, it'll take a half hour, 45 minutes, wire in another output transformer, and hear it and go, well, that sounds really good, too. Your audio memory lasts for about 30 seconds when you get to those fine, fine details. But on this rig, I can just go click, 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 better, worse, better, worse. And side by side, there's magic and the good quality parts. It's the thing that makes the inner part of your brain go happy. And that's it, you know. So, yeah, Eric Yar's making a Porsche analogy, you know, a 997 versus a 912. Quite a different car. 912 is basically a Volkswagen with no back seats in it, from what I understood. And uh, 997 is a fire-breathing monster. So, anyway, we digress into Transformer talk. It does have the issue. Okay, Gibson Guitar Guy, well, send a note uh, over, send it to Joe at 65 amps. And just like it sounds, J-O-E at 65 amps. Tell him you spoke with me, and we'll get the amp back and take care of it for you. No problem. Happy to do it. I'm sorry for the hassle. If you can live with it for a while, it's fine. You have to do it immediately. It's, it's all good. Uh... Yeah. So, uh... We should wrap up here. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. I haven't had yeah. breakfast either. What do you guys think? What's on your mind? You could do that, Gibson Guitar Guy, if you just turn the bump off. If it doesn't bother you, it's fine. But yeah, when you turn the bump on, it just depends. If you want that channel 2 to default to the bump on, you're going to live with that issue. So... Uh, it's up to you, no pressure, and no hurry. Live with it and decide a, a week or a month or a year from now. It's fine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's up to you, man. No pressure. Whatever you want. We're very happy to do it if you need it. So it's fine. I'm getting into tube manufacturing. If I had a financial backer, I would in a minute. I would love to. So I think there's a genuine need for that in the world. And, uh, well, thank you, Guitar SRV. We love you, too, man. Um, 
so yeah, honestly, if you know anyone who's usuriously wealthy and wants to blow five million dollars, put it in a factory, to probably turn around and make fifteen million dollars a year after that. Um, honey Boo Boo, who's Honey Boo Boo? Hey, it's Charles in Puerto Rico. Master Sonics there, that's yeah. Charles. Um, let me know, because I can pull it off. I just need some cash. So any other questions? We're all good. Any other tube things you're curious about? It can be base level stuff, high level stuff, whatever. Don't be embarrassed. If you don't know how a tube works, any of those sorts of things. Then why don't someone do it quick? Yeah, I agree. I I would love to get into making tubes. I think it would just resurrect the guitar as a mainstream instrument, to be honest with you. I think the implications are much broader than just, okay, now we have a good supply of tubes. I think it would make the guitar a lot more attractive to producers, to making records, to touring artists, and everything, because they've got higher quality at their fingers. Ah, what pizza toppings? It's too late, Eric. you got to order the pizza at the beginning of the show. But I like sausage and black olives and onions. <laughs> yes, you need to order the pizza at about 12.30. Next week, I'll bring it. Okay, yeah, cool. Come on over, baby. And Eric met us over at Indian last week and brought uh, Shanker's B. Any jazz guys using 65? Yeah, uh, darn it, I can't remember his name now. He plays with a uh, sax player guy um, from the 70s and 80s, um, Sanborn, and I can't think of his name now. And, you know, guys like Mark Goldenberg, he plays with Jackson Brown, but he's actually a jazz guitarist. He's got three or four of our amps. And then you have the guy that's married to the jazz person. Um, what's his name? Elvis, Elvis Costello. Costello. Yeah, a little Irish guy. Uh, yeah, and he goes out and plays with her using his little Elvis. Um, so this is interesting. What is a sweet spot for NOS for 6L6 GCs for milliamps? Depends on the voltage. If you're at about 450 plate volts, about 30 milliamps. 30 to 34. See? Take that. <laughs> Actually, if you write me, like, send me a message on Facebook, um, I will tell you on my Guitar Amplifier Blueprinting website how to get to a page that has a little red button that appears to be just a little decoration, but it's not. It's a button that when you push it, it'll launch an Excel spreadsheet and it'll tell you what the plate dissipation of various tubes is and let you plug in the data to come up with your proper bias spot. And I have this so I could be anywhere on the road with anybody and rather than them have to take notes on what I'm doing, I say just go on the web and push on this little red button and it'll come up, bring up all of this in a big cheat sheet. That's right. Or blow up Russia when you hit that button. Yes. Miles is good, but I don't know. That's some serious programming. I that's that's more that's, firepower than I have at my house. That's beyond HTML. But uh, okay, guys. So last call. It's one thirty. Again, if you're going to watch this recording, there's going to be three different files because we somehow got dropped or I dropped us. Either way. Uh, so yeah, last chance. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, as they say in the bars. Let's eat. Okay. I don't know where we're going to go. I don't know if Mexican sounds good or not. I think something healthier than that. Where should we go? I can't go anywhere far because I have to pick up one of the boys. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah. Go to sushi. I'm kind of broke. I think sushi's out of the question today. Uh, thank you, Frank Schaffer. And, uh, well, we're just going to go ahead and sign off. So, it's again, it's August 22nd. Oh, my gosh. And uh, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. And while we try to get our technical things uh, 
resolved before next week and I'll play this prototype amp for you guys again, okay? So all the best and thanks again and uh, we'll see you very soon. Thank you, Miles, for showing up. I appreciate it sincerely. My tube guru, it's always, always fun. Peace. All right, fellas, take care.